Several years back, I had the privilege of leading a group of members from this church and also friends of this church to a spiritual pilgrimage of sorts to Scotland and Ireland. And uh, one of the highlights of the trip was uh, getting a chance to see the Royal Tattoo in Edinburgh that's there every month of August. Uh, we even had a chance to worship in the Mother Church, St. Giles, on that Sunday. And then we had a chance to visit Rosalind Chapel of the Da Vinci Code fame, uh, just uh, um, not too far from St. Andrews. And then we made our way over to Iona, Scotland, and uh, I had a chance to see where Christianity came from Ireland to Scotland with St. Columbus. And, uh, and then we took a ferry from Mall over to Northern Ireland, Belfast. And on the itinerary was an opportunity to see uh, where the Titanic was made, the very shipyard where the Titanic was made. Uh, it is a wonderful museum that tells the whole story of the Titanic. And if you have a chance to go to Belfast, I encourage you to, to see it. But also on the itinerary was something that um, I wasn't sure that I was all excited to go and see. Uh, it was to visit the very road of sectarian violence. Uh, and the name of this road is very apropos. It's called the Shankill Road. And, uh, and this is a road that pretty much bisects the Catholics and the Protestant. They even have a wall. And so we went and visited that road that was a scene of so much violence. But because of the Good Friday Accords, that very wall that separates the Catholics from the Protestant has been become the Peace Wall. There are murals all over that wall. And it's now the Peace Wall. And you can see murals to people who have been the great peacemakers of history. And so you can imagine that you see Nelson Mandela on that peace wall. There's a, a, a mural to that. There's one also to Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, there's also one to Frederick Douglass and also uh, uh, to Jimmy Carter. And so it was quite amazing to see uh, this mural and uh, these wonderful scriptures and all uh, quoting about the importance of peace. I only share this with you because Paul, in our letter to Ephesus, makes the point that Christ, his work, has taken two groups that have been hostile towards one another and broken down the wall that divides them one from another. According to Paul, Jesus has done something one better than the peace wall of the Shankill Road. As good as the Good Friday agreements was, it still hasn't been able to establish peace in one's heart. But Paul says that the work of Christ has done that very thing. Now, as we reflect on the work of Christ and how Christ has broken down the wall that divides us one from another... And we think about the times in which we live, which are very polarized times, are there not? I think we need to be reminded of the work of Christ that breaks down this wall of hostility that divides us one from another, whether we're Republicans or Democrats, whether we are foreigners or citizens, whether we are rich or poor, whether we are... Presbyterians or Baptist or Protestant or Catholic, no matter how you think about it, whether we live in the world or the city, uh, we 
tend to live in a world in which we really don't know our neighbor like we once did. We live in a multicultural society and we know that our neighbor who lives next to us is probably different from us and we sometimes take the what little knowledge we have of our neighbor and we use that to, to reinforce our prejudice without realizing what the work of Christ has done breaking down the wall that divides us. In Paul's case, it was Jew and Gentile. And it's interesting how both groups considered the other without God. And that word in the Greek is atheos, without God. And so you would say, well, uh, the Jews considered the Gentiles without God because they, without the knowledge of the one true God. The Jewish people were radical monotheists. Every worship service in the synagogue began with the recitation of the Shema. Hear, O Israel, hear the Lord your God is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And so, from the Jewish perspective, from the worldview of the Jews, Gentiles were without God, atheists, because they did not worship the one true God. But from the Gentiles' perspective, the Jews were atheists. And you say, how come? It's because they did not participate in the cult of Caesar. That was their patriotic duty to pay homage to the Roman gods who protect the Roman Empire. And it was thought that if you did not pay tribute to the Roman gods and the cult of Caesar, Caesar whether you worshipped other gods or not, that was not the important. It was your patriotic duty to salute the flag and pay sacrifice to Caesar. And if you didn't, they felt like something bad was going to happen to their city. And so from the Gentile perspective, the Jews were atheos without God. So you can see the hostility between these two groups. And yet Paul has the audacity to say that in Jesus Christ, through his death on the cross, he has broken down the wall that divides us, that wall of hostility in his one body, he put to death on the cross. We all know that the Good Friday Accords are beginning to unravel. And they're beginning to unravel because of the Brexit vote. Sectarian violence is beginning to pop up again because the Protestants want and voted to leave the European Union and the Catholics wanted to stay. And so, unless Christ becomes our peace, Unless our lives are built upon the foundation of Christ as our cornerstone and the teaching of the apostles and the prophets, the teaching of Jesus, love one another as I have loved you. Forgive one another as I have forgiven you then what we just did a few minutes ago was an empty rite, an empty ritual, an empty symbol. And what did we do a few minutes ago that testify how Christ has become our peace? What did we do? We passed the what? The peace. Since God has forgiven you in Christ, let us forgive one another. The peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. I felt it in my body, did you? 
<coughs> you see, we need to build our lives upon the love of God that sets us free to love one another openly, without fear. I saw an interesting uh, video on YouTube the other day. Um, it was, it, the caption was, this two-year-old has found a new friend and refuses to let the fence keep him from playing with his new friend. So I had to click on it because I knew I was going to be preaching about the wall that is broken down. So I clicked on it and it was this two-year-old and he had a little ball and he threw it across the fence and a golden retriever suddenly pops up his head and drops it over on the other side and he laughs and he picks it up and throws it. The golden retriever comes back and drops it. And I thought about, you know, the world in which is divided one from another in so many different ways, isn't this the role of the church to talk about the wall that Christ tears down so that we can be friends one to another. This is the good news in which we proclaim upon which is the hope of the world. Let us be like that two-year-old who delights in making new friends, even if it means crossing boundaries. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.